Presley joins us live with uh, more about this competition and why a renaissance might be underway regarding chess in America. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being on Good Day. First of all, congratulations not only on being a Grand Master Champion, but also being in the Chess Hall of Fame yeah, uh, for the last cool. two years. Uh, what, how what, thank how you, accomplished do you. you need to be to have that happen? Well, there are a number of Grand Masters here in the World Chess and U.S. Chess Hall of Fame. It depends on what you've accomplished in your career. For me, I've been a part of the game now for over 35 years and I've coached a national championship team, writ teams, written books, uh, designed apps, done commentary uh, for championships like this one. And I've played a little bit as well, so <laughs> it, it's been quite a ride. Outstanding. 35 years, so clearly you started when you were two. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is, is chess making a comeback? I mean, it, it seems like more and more people are playing it. You know, it doesn't take a lot of, like, you know, you don't have to plug it in. You can just take board out and, and go play, right? Yes, chess is absolute, absolutely going through a resurgence, especially here in the United States. We've seen it from a lot of the sponsorship that's been given by Rex and Dr. Jeannie Singfield. We call it the Singfield effect. These philanthropists in St. Louis who love chess and decided they wanted to really make not just a great program here in St. Louis, but to affect the entire country. So they have a great chess club here. They also have the World Chess Hall of Fame with a giant piece, 20 feet tall, standing right outside. You can't miss it. And you also see these top players here in the United States that are making a splash on the world stage, particularly one Fabiano Caruana, who is the number one player in the United States, the number two player in the world, and he just qualified to play for the world title against Magnus Carlsen. That's going to be happening in November, and he could become the first American since Bobby Fischer played against Boris Baskey back in 1972 to win the world title. How incredible uh, would that be? I mean, yeah. that's been, you know, that's been 50 years plus, so that would be a huge honor for the United States. Absolutely, and the U.S. is starting to have those kind of players. I mean, it's not just Fabi, we call him Fabiano Caruana. Fabi's got to play against Wesley So, who won the t U.S. title last year. He's a fellow top 10 player. Hikaru Nakamura, another fellow top 10 player. We have three Americans in the world top 10 right now as we speak. And then you have all these teenagers who are playing in the U.S. and U.S. Women's Championship. 15-year-olds. How many 15-year-olds you know competing against the best of the best in a sport? And yet you have five of them, five teenagers, playing in the U.S. Women's Chess Championship and two teenagers in the U.S. Championship. So it's just, it just speaks to how chess is really growing as a grassroots effort here in the United States. You know, and that brings me to a question about when is the best time to introduce chess? I'm 50. And I can't figure it out to save my life. But my seven-year-old son has already figured it out. In your opinion, is it, is it really something that's easier for kids to grasp than later on in your adult life? You know, a lot of adults have this, this kind of stigma around chess, or this stereotype in their mind, chess is hard, it's difficult to learn. You probably just didn't learn it the right way. And maybe you need your seven-year-old to teach you. <laughs> but that, you know, you, you get, if you can, get, you can get kids started as young as four or five, Probably the ideal age is about six, when they're just learning the right cognitive abstractions. But we've seen four or five-year-olds pick up the game as well. You start them young so that, you know, when they're 50, they can be bragging about how they learned <laughs> to play with their dads and their moms. It's a great family game. And last question, just real quick. What is the shortest number of moves that you, in which you have won a chess match? Two moves. Oh, Two moves. What? oh come on! You gotta what? really play some bad moves. You're not gonna see any of that happening here at the U.S. <laughs> the U.S. Women's Championship. They know those moves. But yes, you make you make a couple of really bad moves. You can go down. Very fast. Okay, like that I said. person wanted to fight you afterwards, right? Yeah. After two moves, you guys had a fight after that. That person had to come over the board and fight you. That's outstanding. Pretty embarrassing. That's pretty outstanding. Isn't One it? of the moves was him just open up the box. Hey, you thanks lose. for joining You're us. Right, that okay. was amazing. Thank you Grand so Master much. Maurice Ashley, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Outstanding. It's a lot of fun. And one of those teenagers he mentioned is uh, from California, La Cañada, a oh, uh, 15-year-old okay. girl who's there, and uh, she's uh, already an international master. She's uh, tremendously talented, so we'll keep our fingers crossed for her. Oh, my goodness. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that was cool. I can't grasp it. Two moves. Yeah, you're right. One was opening the box. Open the box. The other, <laughs> the second I'm was here. Putting yeah. your, I'm sitting down. <laughs> sitting down in the chair. <laughs>